The defense is now getting its turn in the trial of a University of Virginia lacrosse player accused of murdering his ex-girlfriend. Prosecutors rested their case on Wednesday after friends testified the defendant was out of control. Whit Johnson is covering the trial in Charlottesville, Virginia. Wick, good morning. Erica, good morning to you. Well, the day before Yardley Love's body was found, friends say George Hughley was belligerent, drinking all day long. That night, they say he was even worse, disappeared for a while, then came back, and then lied about where he was. In Wednesday's testimony, teammates of UVA lacrosse player George Hughley painted him as a menacing drunk. Around midnight May 3, 2010, friends say Hughley was gone from his apartment where he was partying earlier, roughly the same time Yardley Love was allegedly beaten to death. When he came back, one teammate said, there was no doubt in my mind there was a change in Hughley's demeanor. He had a blank stare on his face. But Hughley never explained what was wrong. Instead, he gave some story about visiting friends that the teammate knew was a lie. That showed consciousness of guilt. Attorney Scott Goodman, who's practiced law in Charlottesville for 34 years, says the testimony hurts the defense, which claims Hughley was way too drunk to plot a murder. Shows he was aware he had done something wrong, had something to hide, uh, and had the ability to form that um, presence of mind to say it. Teammates say Hughley had been drinking all day during a father-son golf tournament. One saw him with a beer in hand about 11 a.m. Another said by that night he was sloppy, incoherent, not speaking properly. He was later seen peeing on the side of a building. But this kind of behavior, friends say, was by now a regular occurrence, behavior that led to abuse, and as many asking how it could take place between two successful, well-educated young people. Experts in domestic violence are not surprised. It can happen to people of all ages, people of all walks of life. If you live in the inner city or if you live you know, in a very privileged background, it really doesn't matter. You could be a victim of this crime. Tragically, friends of the couple say they considered an intervention, even on that last night, but it never came. We've also learned that on that night, George Hughley was exchanging what were described as playful text messages with three other women. Those messages continued late into the night and even after the alleged attack. Whit Johnson in Charlottesville this morning. Thank you.